Galaxy Houston. It's good to see you this morning. If you're here, we welcome you. If you're tuning in online, thank you for joining us. Would you rise to your feet this morning as we open up with a word of prayer? God, we thank you this morning, Father, for it is Pentecost Sunday, God, and we come expecting, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit to rest upon us this morning. So God, with everything within us, Lord, we give praise to you for you're worthy and deserving of it all. In Jesus' name, amen.
the depths of our hearts, God, for you to reveal yourself to each of every one of us, Lord, in a more tangible way, God. Would you meet us here this morning, Father, in every need, every desire? God, from you, Lord, would you meet it now? the Lord. What a blessing for us that we're able to receive the finished work of salvation when Jesus fulfilled the Passover when he became the very Lamb of God died in our place. So the same as the blood of the Lamb on the Passover puts on the doorpost and the lintel. When the blood of Jesus will receive and apply it on our life, the Passover has happened. That we're no longer under condemnation. We're no longer unfit for the Spirit of God to live in us. Now everything can be changed and we can be as the temple that God can dwell. And by that blessing, we're grateful that everything that Jesus has paid for has become a reality for our life. So this morning, as the first Sunday of the month, and it's also Pentecost Sunday, where the Spirit of God has been poured out on our flesh, we come before the Lord's table, and we receive the communion this morning. We also receive the blessing of all the benefit that Jesus has restored for us. His body broken so we can be healed, can be restored. His blood has been shed. So everything that is lost because of mankind have sinned against Him can be restored in our life. And it's important that we can be sanctified. Our sin has been removed and we again can have God, the Spirit of God, be inside of us. What a blessing. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Till he come. Praise God. Would you stand with me and have the communion element in your hand? Let's pray and ask the Lord to sanctify the element and pour out his power. Thank you, Lord. For your body. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. I ask right now that you will sanctify this element, the bread and the cup that we are about to receive. And Lord, put your power on it. So as we eat this bread 
and drink this cup is not just a picture, an image. This has become the real power and blessing from you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for willing to walk through all the suffering that your body has been broken so we can be whole and that we're grateful. Thank you for your blood that have shed. And as we receive your blood, Lord, is in our life. The thing that lost can be restored. And Lord, most of all, the judgment is passed over. We're no longer under condemnation. You know, on, the, on the list of the people who will spend eternity without your presence. The judgment pass over us. And that we eternally grateful. We praise you and magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, take the bread, broke it, and he said, take, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you take the bread right now? And in the same way, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you take the cup and remember what Jesus has done for us? Thank you, Lord. Now may the benefit of the body and the blood of Jesus take full effect on each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Amen, church. Let us continue to worship God this morning through our giving and offering. And our prayer here at VBC Houston is that for all of us, that we will never cease to praise God, worship God every single day of our lives, for he is worthy of our worship. And for us, we are a people that God has designed to worship him. And so, you know, the Bible says that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So let us do that this morning. Let us worship God this morning, especially on this morning where we remember what Christ did for us, that ultimate sacrifice on the cross. And it's a free gift of salvation, right? In this world, we're often taught in order to get something, we have to work hard at it. We have to, you know, grind it out. We have to pull the hours. We have to study really hard, pull in the overtime. But that's not the case with this gift of salvation because we could never earn it. And Jesus was the only one that was worthy, that was acceptable, that was pure, perfect. So he was the sacrifice for us all. And so let us worship God this morning. And if you would like to give, all you have to do is either put your offering in the envelope that's located in the seat in front of you and just hold on to that and you can drop it off in the offering buckets afterwards or if you'd like to give online just get on your smartphone go to vbchouston.com and just click on that red give button amen so let us bow our heads at this time as we give this time to God and just continue to worship him for all that he has done for us and for who he is God we just love you so much God we come to you right now God just as your children thanking you every day lord that you have brought us into this relationship with you through your son jesus christ thank you god that we don't have to strive to earn your love you already loved us god and you made a way for us to be reconciled with you through your son jesus and so god we just continue to lift our hands up to you to worship you we continue god to praise your name we continue to shout that on the mountaintops god and lord we just bring to you our best god we thank you god that everything that you have given us god that you are our provider and so lord god we worship you we 
bring to you our best through our tithing and offering. And God, we just say, God, have your way with the offering, God. May it be used to expand and further your kingdom, God. And Lord, we just pray over it. Just give us the wisdom, Holy Spirit, to be able to use it to share with others about Jesus Christ and what he has done for all of us. And Lord, we pray, God, that you will be with those who are here this morning and those watching online, that you will continue, God, to just be the miracle worker in their lives, God. And Lord, continue, God, to just comfort those who are in need. Be with those, God, who need a miracle. Be with those, God, who need healing, God. For you know us, God. You knew us before we even were born, and you have a plan and a purpose for all of our lives. So we just thank you, God, that we don't live life alone, but you are there every step of the way. We love you. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We have a few announcements to go over this morning. If you are here with children from the ages of nursery to the sixth grade, at this time, our children's ministry, VBC Kids, is taking place in the COC right now. So you can walk your child over there, and there will be a team member that could check your child in as they go in to worship God this morning. After service this morning, we will have a time of fellowship and refreshments out in the foyer area. So join us for that. We'll have kolaches, donuts, and um, some snacks for you to be able to just enjoy as we just catch up with one another and fellowship with one another. Amen? This is a friendly reminder that Vacation Bible School, VBS 2022, is taking place really soon. The dates for VBS this year are from Monday, uh, June 13th, all the way to the 17th, and it will take place at 7 p.m. each of those days. Now, it will be a great time for all of us here and for children and adults of all ages to gather together as we will discover how God's creativity didn't stop at the book of Genesis. It didn't stop with him creating the universe and creating man, but it continues in all of us each day because God is our workmanship. He is our workmanship who is constantly molding us every day to redeem us, reclaim us, and to transform us. And so please join us for that. It will be an exciting time. If you'd like to register, you can register outside in the foyer area. We have an information table out there where you can register, or you can scan that QR code right there, and you can register that way. Summer is officially here, and we want to remind everyone that we are going to relaunch our simple churches throughout the city. And so this will be a time for us to gather at someone's home to really dig into the Word, pray for one another, study the Bible, and to just grow in our relationship with Christ. And so if you are interested in joining a simple church, we have an interest form that you can fill out. It's, you can either fill it out by clicking on the link in the VBC weekly letter that gets sent out every week, or you can fill out that form in the uh, foyer area at our information table afterwards. Or, once again, you can, there should be a slide with the QR code. You can scan that. But this form is just wanting to get an idea of everyone's interest, whether you are interested in joining, where your availability is, how often do you want to join, is it weekly? And so that way the team can gather that information and pray about how best to launch these simple churches. And just follow us on our social media. We'll give you more information about everything uh, in the coming weeks. Finally, finally, please join us, VBC Dream Team members, in the COC after Vietnamese service. We want to just rally everyone together and get everyone excited again about serving on the Dream Team. So this is open to all of our Dream Team members, or if you, have been, you haven't been serving because you've been taking a break and you want to serve again, this is open to you. This is open to anyone who isn't on the team yet, but wants to join and just be a part of the team here as we win people towards Christ. Join us in this COC. It'll be a great time for uh, us to gather together. There will be leaders there who will just uh, give you more information about serving. There will be uh, team building activities. This is going to be an awesome time to gather together. And there will be prizes. Uh, there will be lunch that's provided. And apparently we have a gift for everyone who attends. So join us for that. It will be a great time. And so after Vietnamese service, join us in the COC for that. So those are the announcements for this morning. Let us welcome at this time Pastor Sam as he shares the word this morning. Amen. Good morning, church. Man, it's so good to be here this morning. I'm, I'm just thrilled to actually preach this morning. Uh, as I woke up, I was just so grateful for so many things. And as I was sitting in the, in the seat right there just after worship, I was already moved to tears, and I can already feel the Holy Spirit moving. And one of the things that I was so grateful for and something that I could just give God praise for this morning as I woke up was, Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for giving me one, someone who's a leader in my life. 
someone who's there for me, someone who leads me and guides me, and someone who encourages me and gives me boldness when I need it, someone who empowers me to, to continue to push every day. And I was just so grateful and, and just listing these things out. And, you know, this, and, and, you know every morning uh, when I get ready for church, I'm either listening to praise and worship music or a sermon from somebody else. This morning, I, I just happened to laugh because I clicked on a sermon, and it was actually by Joyce Myers. And I laughed because growing up, all I hear about Joyce Myers is my mom loves listening to her. And my mom has all of her books and everything like that. And as I clicked and watched the video and I watched her sermon, I was just laughing the entire time. And it happened to be a message about the Holy Spirit and how, how the Holy Spirit is supposed to be there in our lives for so many different reasons. And some of the things that she was sharing, I was just... just it just brought just so much joy into my heart to hear somebody else share, somebody else share on the pulpit, someone else share from their heart how important the Holy Spirit is to them. This morning, I ask that you dig deep in your heart this morning. I ask that you really dig deep in your heart and you ask yourself, do you truly have a good relationship with the Holy Spirit? Dig deep in your heart right now and ask yourself, do you know what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life? Do you know who the Holy Spirit is? Do you know his purpose in your life? Today's Pentecost Sunday and something that's amazing about it is for the last few weeks we've been learning just from, we've been learning about all the different things leading up until this day. And if you understand anything about what happens after this day uh, in the Bible, you can see that there's a change, there's a shift in the Bible that happens after that. It's almost like a story of testimonies following after the day of Pentecost. You see the different journeys that every single disciple goes on, or you see the journey that many of the disciples go on, I should say, and the things that change in their life when they're filled with the Holy Spirit. For many of you in this room, I, I ask you that same question is, do you see a change after you've been filled with the Holy Spirit? Or maybe for some of us in this room, you, you may be saying, well, well Pastor, what, what is that? What does being filled with the Holy Spirit mean? And, and first off, I, I understand, maybe I've heard it before when my, my friends might have prayed or I grew up Catholic, so I understand Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But, but truly, what do you mean by having a relationship with the Holy Spirit? I thought I just needed a relationship with Jesus. And maybe that's some of the questions that we ask and maybe, you know, something else to talk about too. Some, some people talk about Pentecost Sunday and, and, I, and I heard a, a, a pastor say something about Pentecost Sunday where some people shy away or, or they may already be turned off the moment that someone says Pentecost Sunday because it sounds like Pentecostal. And, and for them growing up, going to a Pentecostal church might have been a little bit different for them. It might have been a little bit different where they, they might have saw things differently that they usually don't see at their church. You know, I've been blessed, honestly, growing up here at VBC to see the full power of the Holy Spirit, to see the full understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, not only just through my life, but through lives of many members and also our, our pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor Khan, the differences that the Holy Spirit can make in our lives. And I hope that today, maybe today is a day where you hear about the Holy Spirit for the first time. Or maybe today is a day where not only we understand that the lives of the disciples were changed, but today's a day maybe your life can be changed. Maybe today is also a time where maybe some of you in this room, you may say, well, you know what, Pastor Sam, I, I had a good relationship with the Holy Spirit, but honestly, I haven't spoken to him in a long time. Well, maybe all it takes is for you to, to understand that the Holy Spirit's waiting for you, to talk to you, because, man, not only do we need him in our lives, but he's the best thing that Jesus has left for us a friend, a comforter, many, many things. Before we get started, I want to do this. I want us to stand to our feet, and I want us to pray. And after we stand to our feet, I'm going to ask for you guys to do something. So let's rise to our feet this morning. Maybe just stretch a little bit. It's Sunday morning. It is a good morning to be here. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much, because you are a game changer. I completely believe that you are the game changer, Lord. I thank you so much for everything that you've been doing. I thank you so much for, for just the guidance that you have, have uh, done for us in our lives. And this morning, I ask that, Holy Spirit, you speak to everyone's heart. You speak to everyone's heart this morning. Allow them to be able to receive the word that is going to be given today. Holy Spirit, I ask that you just bring joy into this room right now. I ask that you bring joy into this room right now. For those who are, are needing a filling of something, Holy Spirit, I ask that you fill their needs right now. 
And as we, as we are praying right now, I ask that you guys just take in just a deep breath of air. Just take in a big, deep breath of air right now. And just know that you can rely on the Holy Spirit for the things that you're going through. The heavy burden that you may have walked in with, just know that the Holy Spirit can help you with those things right now. And let him just re be released into your life right now. We thank you so much and we ask, Holy Spirit, that today as we are learning about you, that you empower us that you help us to see that there is boldness that we need in our lives and we can only get it from you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, before you sit down, don't take a seat. I see many of y'all take a seat. Before you take a seat, do me a favor. Go and find someone. Give them a hug or say hello to them. Give them a word of encouragement, something. Move around, change it up a little bit, and then we'll get to our message. As you, get, as you give uh, the people that you are saying hi to a hug or saying hello and you make your way back to your seat, go ahead and have a seat. And uh, something that I do want to say is this. Number one, it's way too quiet in here today for it to be Pentecost Sunday. And the reason why I say that is because it wasn't quiet on that day. And for those of you who do know the story of Pentecost Sunday, and today might be a refresher, you may have been in church and you may have heard this message plenty of times, but for me, I'm one person that can't watch a movie more than one or two times. I can't. I'm just not that person. I just don't, I already know what's going to happen. I, I really don't want to watch it over. But when I read the Bible or when I hear stories from the Bible, something about being able to hear it over and over, I, there are things that I always miss. There are things that I can continually learn. And, and here's the crazy part about it is it's because our God is living. There's not one thing that's going to only be the same for that one time that you hear it. It's going to change every time because our God is living. He's telling a different story in our lives every day because we're going through life differently every day, and he's going through it with us. See, it's not different to him, but it's different to us because you get to know him even more, even better every day. And that's only through the relationship that you have with the Holy Spirit. And I believe that that's such a true word because every single day, my relationship with the Holy Spirit is not the same. The things that I'm asking for from the Holy Spirit every day is not the same. It's a journey that I continue to have. And, and I'll tell you this, if you feel like your relationship with God has been stagnant, I'll ask you, do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Because here's the thing, when we look at the scriptures and we look at what's happening here in the Bible and we see the story of what we, we're, we're going to learn today, of what happens with the, with the disciples and the apostles in the room, when we see that, you're going to understand that something changed in them. Something shifted in them. Something changed in their lives. And, and, and it could have been the fact that the Holy Spirit was introduced to them, or it could have been an understanding of empowerment, boldness. So if we can, I want you to, to look up on the screens. We're going to actually be reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And if you have it in, in your, on your phone or in your Bible, read along with me. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And it says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were, were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames, flames or tongues of fire appeared and set on, on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. When I, when I read this scripture over for the second time, there were things that were shown to me, but there's also questions for me. You know, the craziest thing for me, and, and, and yeah, I'm going to have a conversation with you guys about this message today, because the craziest thing is, this is in the Bible. This is from the Bible. I didn't type this up to make this up. This is in the Bible. Every scripture that I'm going to read to you, I did not make it up. Now, maybe you're not used to the New Living Translation. Maybe you're used to New King James Version. It's just a different version that's written differently, but it's in the Bible. But do you know the craziest thing to me is that people can pick and choose what they want to learn from the Bible or what they want to believe from the Bible. And the biggest thing that I think, the biggest controversy that we may have in many churches is this right here. It's about the Holy Spirit. And, and the craziest thing to me is how can you choose to not read this and understand that if it happened to them, why can't it not happen to us? Because there's other scriptures that are actually going to back up the fact that the Holy Spirit is a gift to us. 
And it's actually a backing from what Jesus is saying to the disciples. Before this took place, before this took place, before Pentecost took place, Jesus actually told the disciples as he was meeting with them, as he, as he actually entered into the room, they were all scared and he, he, he let them know, hey, it's me. And they didn't believe it at first and all of a sudden they, they were like, oh, it's the Messiah, it's him. And we read different stories, we read different, what I would say, testimonies of what had happened during that time. We know about Thomas, he doubted it because all of his friends saw it, but he didn't see it. And he said, there's no way that that's Jesus. Unless I see the piercings in his hands and in his feet, I'm not going to believe it. And all of a sudden, Jesus showed up to Thomas and said, hey, check these out. It's me. And he knew that it was him. My thing is this, is maybe some people don't want to believe in the Holy Spirit. It's maybe because they've never encountered the Holy Spirit. And maybe what it means to encounter the Holy Spirit is maybe not just seeing with your eyes, because our eyes are truly the first place that we cast judgment on people. Maybe you seeing somebody radically changed, you might have thought, that's too much for me if that's the Holy Spirit. And you never witness to yourself personally what it means to be changed by the Holy Spirit. Maybe someone raising their hands is a little too much for you. Maybe someone doing praise and worship dancing is a little bit too much for you. But I'll ask you this, if I go to your favorite sports game, or if I go to do the, whatever it is that's the favorite thing that you like to do, and you see, and I see how crazy you are at those sports events, or how loud you can get, I'm be like, man, this person really loves this sport. Or whenever I see a lot of people go to concerts, that, that they're shouting and screaming at the top of their lungs, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's you, I'm here, and everybody's screaming in those concerts. See, for me, it's a little bit different, though. Austin plays baseball, and I've gone to Austin's baseball games before, and I've screamed and I've shouted, and yeah, it's T-ball. It, like, it's the beginning of baseball, you know? But I am that uncle that's out there, and I'm like, Austin, hit the ball harder. Austin, run, tag that kid. Just, just get him. And Austin looks at me, and he's like. And it's funny because before the game starts, I'll tell Austin, hey, hit it as hard as you can. Tag as many kids as you can get. It, it's a game. It's okay. And he looks at me and he's like, okay, I can do it. And then you have Julianne over here like, Austin, be fair, okay? Don't catch every ball. Let your teammates, let your teammates. And I look at Austin like, and he looks at me, he just, it gives me a thumbs up. And, and I'm just rooting for him like, come on, Austin, you can do it, you can do it. And I have so much excitement because there, there's this relationship that I have with Austin as his uncle. And, and here's the thing though. When I see people get filled with the Holy Spirit, I have that same kind of mentality. Like, oh, their life's gonna change forever. This is awesome. Or when they encounter the Holy Spirit, I'm like, yes, finally. Finally, you're going to get it. You're going to understand that your relationship with God is not just like surface level anymore. That, that, that truly, God has left us somebody to be in our hearts, in our lives on a daily basis that we can count on. Man, I've been, I've been thrilled this, this whole entire month about, about preaching this message. I've been waiting for this day to preach this message. Why? Because I truly understand that, that having the Holy Spirit in my life was the game changer that changed my relationship with God forever. And if many of you are sitting in this room and you're saying to yourself, well, you know what, Pastor, actually, I'm coming here to church today and I don't have a good relationship with God. Well, I'm going to ask you something, and I said this already in the beginning, is, but do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Because on a daily basis, the Holy Spirit is going to remind you the teachings of what Jesus has taught or remind you the things that Jesus has already taught us He's going to remind us on a daily basis. He's going to be there to help us understand, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. Or, hey, maybe you shouldn't say that. And remember, people are watching. Be a representation of Christ. Love on others. You shouldn't do that. You should say, tell them you love them. Maybe you should pray for them. And, and there's so much encouragement that I get from the Holy Spirit and so much reminder that he gives me in the things that I should be doing. So here's the thing about Pentecost Sunday that I kind of want to just share with us is, well, first and foremost, who's the Holy Spirit? And what is his role in our lives? Let's just break it down from the very beginning is who's the Holy Spirit and what is his role in our lives? Maybe the thing about it is if we don't break it down as simple as who is he and what's he supposed to do for us, maybe you'll just continue to have those ideas that you have from the last person you saw that was filled with the Holy Spirit. There was somebody that asked me something really funny before and I didn't know how to respond to them at that time. I was young, I didn't know. I was at winter retreat and there was a photo that was taken of me. And this person knew me from that camp. 
Um, and I, was, I, I got touched by the Holy Spirit, and I was laying on the ground, and there was a blanket on me, you know, and I, I, I was touched by the Holy Spirit. And someone texted me and was like, hey, why were you sleeping on the floor in, in, the, in the meeting hall? I was like, I don't know how to explain this. I was like, I, I, was like, I don't know. I was just, I don't know. I was young. I didn't know what to say because I knew that they didn't believe in the Holy Spirit. I just didn't know how to respond. And can you imagine what people would think whenever they would see people getting touched by the Holy Spirit here at our church? They would be like, why are people sleeping at the church? That's kind of weird. And it's funny. One of the things that was funny is because from the judgment of our human eyes, when we first see it, we would say, man, that's weird. That's a little bit different. That's a little bit strange. And to me, some of the things that I grew up hearing that's, that's a little different, that's a little strange. Well, it, it was actually my experience on the drums. A lot of Vietnamese adults grew up in churches where they didn't have drums. So when they came to our church and they heard me play, some of them were like, that's a little different. We're not singing. We're, it's a little loud in here. And they would, they would come up to me and be like, Gong, you're playing too loud. And, and I didn't know what to say to them, so I would just be like, oh, okay. That's a little, and to them, that's a little different, and that's a little strange. But as they began, began to have a better relationship with God, and as they began to worship during that time a little bit more, they would say stuff to me like, Gong, I really felt the Holy Spirit whenever you were playing drums. But they were the same people that told me, hey, you're playing too loud. See, maybe in the very beginning of your experience with the Holy Spirit, it's different. Maybe the beginning of your experience with the Holy Spirit, you might have saw with your own eyes, but you didn't experience with your heart. So that's why we have to break it down like this, is who is the Holy Spirit and what is his role in our lives? Well, number one, who is he? Let's look at this, John 14, chapter 14, verses 15 to 17. It says, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is someone. He's not an it, he's a someone. And he's an advocate that was given to us. Whoever will, who, who will never leave you, he is the Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truths. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So who is the Holy Spirit? What did we read in scripture? What did we learn? Number one, an advocate who will never leave. He's never going to leave us. He's someone that's going to be there for us always. And number two, he's going to lead us into all truths. He's not going to lead us into the wrong way, but he's going to lead us into the right way, into the truths. And the last one is he's a promise to us. And where did you get that from, Pastor Sam, that he's a promise? If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He's a promise. If we love, if we love him, if we obey his commandments, he's a promise that we're going to get the Holy Spirit. Dare I say he's the best gift we've ever received? If you do this and you do this, I'm going to give you something really good. We've heard that all before from our parents. If you do your homework, if you sleep early, better yet, if you eat your vegetables, you can have ice cream. And the crazy thing is when you see it in a relationship from a father and a son, like my father in heaven and me, he's saying, hey, if you obey my commandments, if you love on me and, and, and do these things, I've got your back. I've got someone that's going to be there for you at all times. And as children, and, and think about it from a child's standpoint, for us, whenever we're, when we're growing up, when we're in situations that we're scared or we're worried or we, we're timid, like going to school for the first time, what do you want? You want your parents to be with you right away. Oh, whenever you're hurt, what do you, you want somebody to talk, you want your mom and dad to be there for you. In our relationship with God, in our relationship in this world that we live, in our journey in this world that we are going through right now, well, we have somebody. God knew the things that we were going to go through. He already knew, and he, he already understood the assignment. He said, you know what? I know what Tim's going to go through, but don't worry, Tim. I got someone that's going to be there for you. Oh, don't worry, Diana. I, I ha you know the tough times you're going through? I've got someone you can talk to. And he's going to be with you always. Oh, on, don't worry about the things you're going through right now. I've got someone that's going to be there for you. His name's the Holy Spirit. He's going to be there. And that's, that's who he is. This is who the Holy Spirit is. 
He's someone that's going to be there for us. He's someone that's going to lead us into truth. He's somebody that is a promise to us. He, he was guaranteed to us. He, he is someone that is given to us. But the thing is, though, a gift that is given to you, what do you have to do? Receive and accept it. And if we don't, of course, we're never going to know what that gift is. You know, it, it, it's funny because this happened to me a long time ago. And I was given a gift. And at that time, it was actually during my wedding. I was given a gift. And on my day of my wedding, it was so crazy. It was so chaotic. It was like everything was happening super, super fast. So I got a, I got a gift from someone, and I actually put it in a bag. And I never looked in that bag. And about year, a couple years later, Jeannie and I were looking through a box. And in this box was just random things like from our wedding. It was like our invitation we gave out. It was like a place card of like what food we were serving and like all these different things. And somehow there was this gift that was given to us. I never opened it. I never truly received it. I was just given and, and I just put it in the bag. And, I, and we are sitting in my office one day and I, we opened the gift and I was like, oh my goodness, how did I not receive this gift? It's because I never had the chance to open it. I never had the chance to sit down and, 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 and look at what this gift was. And I think that maybe some of us have never given the Holy Spirit a chance. We have never given the chance to receive and understand what the Holy Spirit is. He's a gift to us. See, God knew the things that we were going to go through in life. He understood exactly what it was. He already knows. And he actually already knew to the point where he said, the Holy Spirit is going to be the best thing that I can give you during this time. That's the best thing that she's going to have. She doesn't know it yet. But when she opens this gift, when she receives this gift, and when she understands that there's a relationship that needs to be with this gift, then she'll fully understand how important the Holy Spirit is in her life. See, for me, that's the true understanding that I have. Now, we know who the Holy Spirit is, so what's his role in our lives? And this is where we get to in our message. The first one is this, he'll empower us. The Holy Spirit is here in our lives to empower us. And you may be thinking to yourself, what do you mean empower us? Well, exactly that. This scripture just makes so much sense. Is if you look at Luke 24, verse 29, or verse, sorry, Luke 24, verse 49. And it says, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised. There again, we see a promise. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with what? Power from heaven. Read that again with me. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Heavenly power. Yes, when we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, we have heavenly power. Can I ask you a question? Growing up, what superhero did you want to be? My brother and I, we used to always, like, we had bunk beds, and we would always talk about stuff like this. Like, hey, Mike, if you had any superpower, what would it be? Hey, 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 what, what, what would you want? Like, you want to be fast or like you want to fly or, 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 or like, what do you want to do? And we would always come up with these like different scenarios. Like, oh, I want to be like invisible. Why? Oh, so like I can go and like get whatever I want and nobody would see me. And Mike would be, Mike would say stuff like, I, I think growing up, I always wanted to be like Superman and Mike always wanted to be Batman. Always liked Batman. That was his thing. I always liked Superman. But when I think about it now, growing up, Batman has no powers at all. He's just rich. So maybe Mike knew something I didn't know before growing up. Mike wanted money. And I just wanted something that was fictional. But now where I'm at now, I'm like, the Holy Spirit brings power. Not just any power, but heavenly power. And what's heavenly power mean? Well, for me, something that I've learned personally, the heavenly power, the power that I've understood is this, is power of maybe discernment. Or the power of understanding how to prophesy or speak into people's lives. Or, or, or even being able to pray for people and, 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 and not only be shy about it, but have boldness. Like not just regular boldness, like earthly boldness. No, boldness for the Lord is different. I'll tell you this. I have, I have boldness outside of church when I'm doing regular things. I'm confident in myself. You know, that's one thing. But I know truly when you have confidence in yourself, you're always like, can I do that? I'm not sure if I can. But when you have boldness and confidence through Christ, you understand that our God can do anything. And the Holy Spirit just backs that up in our lives. Like, hey, he can. Lean on him. 
Come on, trust in him. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for me. It was crazy because I've got an amazing story to share. We had a Friday night service. And during Friday night service, as I was playing worship, I couldn't stop looking at one particular student. I've never met this student before ever in my life. It was a group of guys that, that came, and, and I was just dead on, eyes locked on this student, like, huh. And then I said to myself, while I was playing guitar, and one of the students was singing, I said, why, Holy Spirit, am I looking at this person? What is it that you're trying to share with me? And for some reason, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, you need to pray about broken families right now. And so I stopped, and I said, hey, I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me to pray for broken families right now. And I just began to pray, you know, and, and I don't know what, and I said these exact words, I remember, I don't know what you're going through today, and I don't know what it is that you're coming, going home to. But the Holy Spirit wants to let you know that he's there for you. And I looked at, and, and I was looking at that student, and I was like, uh, maybe the word's not for him, but maybe it's for everybody. So, so, so I was just speaking to everyone, and then I started playing guitar again and doing worship, and then the message, and, and after the message, I, was, I sat down on stage while all the students were, like, eating pizza and all this stuff, and then a group of, the group of boys came up. I've only met, like, two of them. The whole group of guys came up to me, and, and then one of the guys, uh, one of the guys, the student that I was looking at, he came up to me, and I said, I don't know why, man. I said, but the Holy Spirit wanted me to share that word about broken families to you. And all the guys looked and was like, oh, like all of them, a group of them, like, oh, that's crazy. I was like, what? Like, what's going on? And he looked at me and he just started crying, crying. All the guys like rallied together and they started hugging him. He was just bawling his eyes out. And he looked at me and goes, Pastor, you, you don't know me. How do you know that? And I said, the Holy Spirit wanted to share this with you, man. I said, I don't know what's going on with your family back at home, but but I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling me that, like, he's there for you. Oh, and he was just crying. He was just crying. And, and then he looked at me, and I said, does this make sense? And clearly it made sense. He was crying, right? And he, I looked at him, and, and he said to me, it's my dad. I said, what, what about your dad? Do you mind sharing? Like, it's okay if you don't want to share. It's all. And he goes, Pastor, as soon as I became a believer, my dad started hating me for no reason. I don't know if he doesn't love God or, or whatever it is, but, and he said, my dad's an alcoholic. And it's crazy because we can't even look at each other anymore. And I, and I look at him and I want, I want to pray for him and I want to hug him because I know what God's doing in my life because I prayed for my sister and now my sister's saved and, and now my mom's saved, but my dad, he hates me. And he's like, Pastor, I don't know why. Like, what can I do? He hates me. Like, I, I come home, and if we're in the same room, he just gets up and goes to his room. He hates me that much. I said, man, it's not that he hates you. I said, whatever it is that's in his life, it's definitely not God. And I said, don't worry, man. I said, allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life, to love on your dad, and to show your dad that God is real, and it's only through your life. He was just crying and crying. And we prayed, all, all the guys prayed together and rallied together to pray for him. And I really felt the Holy Spirit just say to him, your dad will never understand God's love unless he sees it through you. And he just bawled his eyes out. And, and then you know what he said to me? He said, you know what hurts the most though, Pastor? I said, what? He goes, but what did I do to deserve this though? I love God. But, but why does my dad have to hate me? And I said, you know what, man? It's because you're changing your family. And it's not that God hates you at all, but it's that the enemy hates you. And the enemy's trying to wreck what you're doing because your sister's saved, your mom's saved, and your dad's the last one, and that's it. Your whole family will be serving God. How did I know any of that? I don't even know that student. But you know what I do know is that the Holy Spirit lives in me and there's heavenly power that the Holy Spirit gives me because he's in my life and I have a relationship with him. I understand what it means to be able to hear from the Holy Spirit because he's in my life and I have a relationship with him and I'm talking with him and he's sharing things with me. Yes, I question sometimes, Holy Spirit, are you sure? Should I say something like that? Because sometimes it's the wildest things. One time there was a student that was inside this, this church and, and we were practicing how to understand the Holy Spirit by what we would call flash thoughts. 
is just saying, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to learn, like pray for this person? Show me. And you just go off of what you think the Holy Spirit's going to show you. It was super random, and I've shared this before, but I said to that, I, I said to the student, I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to show me? Boom, and I saw it. And it was, it was literally a tractor, a calculator, and a football. And I was like, dude, this is what I see. You can tell me if I'm wrong. Because I was like, Lord, this makes no sense at all. Why are you setting me up like this? I said, I see a tractor, a calculator, and a football. And he looked at me, he was like, how do you know? I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, well, I was working in construction and I got injured, so I lost my football scholarship and I, now I want to go into finance, but I don't think I'm good enough. I said, what? How did that make any sense? He was like, I don't know how you know this stuff. I was like, I don't know this stuff. Only the Holy Spirit's showing me. And then I started to pray for him because he lost his football scholarship, so now his backup plan was to go into finance. And he got injured working on a tractor. How crazy is that? But only heavenly power would show me. Only the Holy Spirit. Another story that I want to share with you guys before we move on to the next point is this. Is I've been talking with, with Jeannie, my wife, and, and I shared this story before. And Jeannie got a new job, and I said, hey, hon, at this new job, like, what is it that you're praying for? Like, why do you want to leave your old job to go to this job? And she was like, you know what? Like, I, I want to build that relationship with my patients. I want to be able to, like, pray for them if I need to pray for them. I want to be able to, like, you know, if, if, if they're my patients, I have a relationship with them. At my other job, it was like, it's urgent care. So I just see them if they're sick, and then they leave, and then I never see them again until they're sick one more time. But at least I can build this relationship when they're young to when they're old. I said, oh, that's awesome. And actually, the organization that she landed with happened to be a Christian organization, which is pretty cool. And so she was talking to me about these things, and, and, I, and, and as I go to lunch with her, you know, I try, we try to eat lunch with each other every day to just talk about things and decompress or, or share a testimony or whatever it is. And she shared with me, she said, man, you know, you want to hear something crazy? I was like, yeah. She said, I have, I have one of my coworkers, and you know her. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool. And she goes, man, she prays when she leaves her house and until she gets to work, and she says that prayer is a big deal in her life. I said, oh, that's cool. Uh, and because she, uh, she was sharing, they were sharing with each other, like, what's their routine? Like, what do they do? And Jeannie was like, man, sometimes I can leave my house and not have any music on and just be in dead silence from when I leave my house to I get, till I get to work. And I, I said, Jeannie, you're crazy. Only crazy people sit in silence. And she just laughed. She's like, it's so peaceful. For me, when I get in my car, it's like volume at 50, praise and worship, blasting as loud as I can have it. Like, that's just me. I wake up in the morning, turn on praise and worship, or I'm listening to a sermon, or I'm watching a YouTube video, loud. Jeannie, she wakes up, she's like quiet. She's like barely waking up, and like she goes into, gets ready, and she's super quiet. So they're sharing with each other like what they do. And then Jeannie said, oh, that's awesome that you pray. Um, I pray too. Like I worship during my rides home actually. And, and, I, and you know, one of the things that I've been trying to work on is I've been trying to really pray for my patients. I've been so busy like with just getting used to work because I'm new, but I really want to take time to pray for my patients. Like that's something that God's put on my heart to do. And that's really why I wanted a new job. And she said at lunch, her and her coworker at lunch, and it was random that they went to lunch too. And this was a conversation that they were having. And Jeannie said to her, or, or Jeannie said to um, her coworker, like, yeah, I really want to pray for my patients. And you know what Jeannie's coworker said? She goes, prayer is a big deal in my life. I pray to God all the time. But I've never thought to pray for people. And Jeannie was like, what? She's like, yeah, I, my relationship with God is, is awesome. Like, I pray to God all the time. And I trust that he's doing things in my life. And, and, but I've never prayed for people. I never thought about it like that. And Jeannie was like, what? She's like, yeah. She was like, yeah, girl, this is how you do it. Like, this is how you pray. And Jeannie was happy. And she was sharing. And she really felt the Holy Spirit leading her to, like, share with her. And then they had the conversation, and they were done, and then they're like, man, Gina was like, man, I'm going to try better to pray for my patients. And the girl's like, yeah, I'll try too. And end of work, Jeannie calls me, and she, she, we were on the phone together, and she hung up, and then she picked up the, she, she said, I got a phone call. So she picked up the phone while she was leaving to come home, and then she called me back and goes, Sam, guess what? I was like, what? She said, you know the person I had lunch with? I said, yeah. She said, she just called me. I said, okay. She said, Dr. Wynn, thank you so much for teaching me how to pray for patients. She said, my last patient, their life was just in shambles. And as a doctor, I didn't know what to say because I'm here to help the kid. I didn't know what to say. And she said, 
All right, I'm going to do what Dr. Wynn said. Hey, can I pray for you? And the patient said, the patient's mom, you know, not the, not the kid, because the kid's only four months old. The mom said, please pray for me. The mom lost her husband on, East, on Easter. So she's raising this four-month-old by herself. And there were, she was just crying and crying. And Jeannie was like, that's awesome. And she was like, Dr. Wynn, thank you so much for teaching me how to pray for people, to have boldness to like just, just do it, to be a light in, this, in, in our job. And she was like, I'm so proud of you. Good job and everything. And Jeannie told me the story. I'm crying and Jeannie's crying. And you understand that when you listen to the Holy Spirit and you have boldness because the Holy Spirit's in your life, teaching people about God becomes easier. When you have the boldness of the Holy Spirit in your life, talking about him to strangers or talking to him to your neighbors or your coworkers about him is a lot easier. Does that make sense? Why? Because the Holy Spirit is telling you and reminding you of the things that you have already learned. I promise you this. Some of y'all are sitting in this message right now. If I ask you next week what I preach about, you'll be like, I don't know. But I promise you this. The moment that you come into a situation and the Holy Spirit reminds you, you can be like, man, Pastor Sam preached this message. And it was the day that you told me, I don't know. But you can be like, man, he shared with me this scripture. And it happens because the Holy Spirit reminds you. I promise you. As long as you have that relationship and you can understand who the Holy Spirit is in your life. And, and then, you know, when I, when I heard that story from Jeannie, it, it really blessed my heart because it reminded me of having true boldness for Christ. And many of you in this room may say to yourself, I'll never be like that. I'll never have that kind of boldness because I'm an introvert. I'm not an extrovert like you, Pastor. I'm not an extrovert like Jeannie. Well, here's the thing, though. You claim to be an introvert or you claim to be an extrovert, but that's your personality that you believe that that's you. But when the Holy Spirit claims things on you, it's a different story. And he claims to you that you're made in the image of God. And our Father in heaven is the greatest of all time. Our Father in heaven is a great communicator. Our Father in heaven is a great, compassionate lover. He is a a, a friend to all. And how do we know these things? We can see it in the mold that he has done in his son, Jesus. As we read in the New Testament about Jesus, the things that Jesus has done, we see all these things and we're reminded by the things that Jesus has done by the Holy Spirit in our lives now. And now we can remember those things and we can do those things too. Be a friend to all. Be compassionate. Teach those to pray. Teach those about what our Lord and Savior has done for us. These are all the things that the Holy Spirit reminds us to do. Now, what's the second thing that the Holy Spirit does for us? The Holy Spirit leads us so we can lead others. This is the most important thing. Why? Because here's the thing. God's called us to love him with all of our heart, soul, and mind. He's also called us to love our neighbors too. Exactly the same. But here's the thing about that though. If you're not constantly reminded on a daily basis that you're loved by Christ, by the Holy Spirit, I guarantee you, you'll have days where you forget. And you'll have days where you go through tough times and you forget that the Holy Spirit is there for you. And sometimes you may ask yourself on a crazy day, God, where are you? But I'll tell you, if the Holy Spirit is in your life, he'll remind you, don't worry, I'm here because this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm here with you. We can get through this, don't worry. Oh, my finances, don't worry. Trust in the Lord. These are things that the Holy Spirit reminds me on a daily basis. Or things like, Sam, Encourage that person. They need encouragement. Sam, pray for that person. They need prayer. And here's the thing. When you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life and and you actually act upon the things that he tells you, I promise you, it's a game changer because you never know the things that the Holy Spirit's trying to show you. Because he's trying to tell us everything that's being told to him from heaven. He's getting all the information and then it's coming to us and we're like, ah, I get it. Oh, I see It's, for instance, things like this is whenever I actually went to Vietnam for the first time. Well, sorry, not the first time. I went to Vietnam for the first time to to speak and to to minister. First off, guys, my Vietnamese is really, really bad. I can't speak much Vietnamese, to be honest. And I can understand things, but there was a language barrier when I was praying for people. So you, you would think that, like, I would have a translator to really help me, and I did, but at times I didn't. And there were things that I was like, Holy Spirit, what should I pray for for this person? I have no clue. I don't, I have no understanding. 
And you know what? Something that I've learned with the Holy Spirit in our life, that power from heaven that we get, is that there's no barriers that the Holy Spirit can't work through or work past. As long as you understand that the Holy Spirit's in your life and you have that power from heaven, that power from the blood of Christ, that power that is in our life that is a game changer because of the relationship we have with the Holy Spirit, there are things that you don't think that you can do that God has just showed us time and time again, and the Holy Spirit reminds us that. For instance, prayer for people for healing. You can do that. Not the power is coming from you, but the power is coming out of you from the Holy Spirit or the the blood of Christ that's in your life. There are a lot of different things that many of us think that we can't do, but the Holy Spirit reminds us, you can, you can, you can. I can't pray for people. I don't know what to say. But if you allowed the Holy Spirit to work in your life, he would tell you the things to pray. Oh, I can't pray for healing. That's not in me. That's for Pastor Khan. But the Holy Spirit's gonna remind you this. The same God that he serves and that he has a relationship with, don't you? That's the things that he reminds me. I'll tell you this all the time. But why me? Why did you choose me? I'm nobody. Why didn't you choose Pastor Khan? I'm, I'm nobody. And the Holy Spirit reminds me all the time, Sam, you're called for such a time as this. You're called for this generation. I, I guarantee you the Holy Spirit's gonna remind you and encourage you of those things. He's an encourager. He's literally here for me to, he's literally here for us to encourage us. And one of the biggest things is encourage us to lead, understand the leading of the Holy Spirit so that we can lead others. See, for many of y'all, y'all may say, well, you're a pastor. You understand how to lead a church. I didn't grow up learning how to lead a church. I, I truthfully trust the Holy Spirit in the leading and guiding of teaching people. That's just how it is. And the biggest thing is this, is leading those around you towards Christ. And you can only do that by the pouring of the Holy Spirit in your life to the point of overflow. Today we sang a song and and that portion of that song is fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. The crazy thing about that song is this is you won't understand what that means until you fully understand that being filled by the Holy Spirit means there's going to be a pouring outside of your life of constant overflow of who God is when you allow him to be in your life and remind you of the things that God is trying to do in your life. You are a child of God. You are worthy. You are bold. You are, you are a representation of Christ. He loves you. He's going to be there for you. He will, he will remind you of these things. And that's who the Holy Spirit is, was made. That's what he was made to do for us, to be there for us, to be able to be that friend for us. And the biggest thing is this, is when you understand that the Holy Spirit is on your side, you've got a partner to go with you everywhere when you want to share about Christ. Everywhere. There are so many times where before I talk to someone about God, I always pray, Holy Spirit, you speak through me. Holy Spirit, you lead me. Holy Spirit, you teach me. Holy Spirit, be with me. You know, one of the craziest things happened recently. And it was crazy to the point where I was just like, yeah, only God. It was funny because Jeannie, Jeannie called me and uh, it's, it's funny because Emily's mom does Jeannie's lashes. She's gonna be like, man, you put, my, you put my business out there, Sam. But Jeannie's been freaking out. Emily's mom's gone. Who's gonna do my lashes? I'm like, chill out. It's not that big of a deal. You can find someone to do it. She's like, no, but I trust her. I've got this relationship with Emily's mom. She understands me. We understand each other. I was like, dude, I didn't know lashes were like that. Like, chill out, you know? And she goes, oh, I have no time. I, I, I've got to go out of town. So I'm just going to go to this place called Amazing Lash. And I was like, she's like, I hate going there. Every time I go there, they glue my eyes shut. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I don't want to go there. And she's like, oh, whatever. I signed an appointment and I went. And I'm on the phone with her and she's talking to me. And she goes to the appointment. And she goes into her room and she, she asks this lady, so how long have you been working here? You know, that's that question that you always ask when you get a haircut from a new person. So how long have you been cutting hair for? Like you're trying to weigh them out. Like, you know what I mean? And they're like, oh, I just started. You're like, dude, this is going to be bad. And Jeannie asked that question. And then she was like, oh, I've been working for a while. And she's like, oh, okay. Are you a master stylist or something like that? And that means like they're top of the top. And she actually said no. And Jeannie was in her head was like, but I signed up for a master stylist. And then Jeannie was like, ah, oh, it's okay. 
So she, and she was looking around the room before she laid down. And she saw a bag. And on that bag, and she said, like, she was like, hey, Sam, you know, like, in the Hispanic culture, when, like, someone passes away, like, like you, you, they put a picture of them and then almost like angel wings. And then, like, they put their name underneath it. And, like, you see that a lot. And I was like, okay, I think I know what you're talking about. And she was like, okay, okay. I'll, and then she shared the story. She was like, I was laying down and the lady started doing, you know, my lashes. And then she was like, hey, I'm sorry to ask this, but I don't normally do this, but I usually have headphones. But are you okay with me listening to my music on my phone? And Jenny was like, oh, this is getting awkward. Like, this is not what I signed up for. And the lady turned on music and it was worship music. And Jeannie was like, huh? This lady was listening to worship music, but she was laughing because she was like, this lady's playing worship music right next to my ear on her phone, but then over the loudspeaker was like secular music. She was like, it doesn't make sense. So Jeannie was like, I'm just going to go to sleep. I don't know what to do. And then the lady asked Jeannie a question. She goes, so what do you do for a living? And Jeannie goes, oh, um, I'm a pediatrician. And she goes, but where? where? She was like, oh, Pearland Pediatrics. She goes, no way. I go there too. I take my kid there too. And Jeannie was like, oh, she's like, how old your, your child? Oh, my child's four months old. And as Jeannie was laying on the bed, she all of a sudden felt the Holy Spirit. And Jeannie said, oh, tell me, tell me a little bit more about you. And they started talking. And then Jeannie goes, I know who you are. She was like, what? She said, you go to Paralympic Pediatrics and so-and-so is your doctor for your child, right? She goes, yeah. She goes, I know you've had it rough lately. She goes, what? And she said, did so-and-so pray for you at the end of your uh, appointment? And she said, yeah, how'd you know that? And she said, because I had lunch with Dr. So-and-so before she saw you that day. And she was crying, that, girl, that lady was crying. And Jeannie told her, don't worry. And she said, you don't understand how much I needed this today because I'm having such a tough day. But to be reminded that God is watching over me even when I don't know it. And Jeannie, Jeannie it just all clicked and she was like, this is the mom that the dad died on Easter. You never know what the Holy Spirit is trying to show you because the Holy Spirit knows the information from above and he's trying to tell you, hey, be obedient. Be obedient. You'll only see once you're obedient. And Jeannie was obedient and look what happened. She was obedient in teaching her coworker how to pray. She was obedient in being bold because the Holy Spirit was sharing with her. Come on, just be bold. Just share a little bit. And as she shared a little bit, you could see the picture reveal itself and unfold. That you never know what it is that God's trying to do with your life. But if you have the Holy Spirit in your life, he'll reveal it to you. He'll reveal it to you. And Jeannie was driving home. And she was like, I'm trying not to cry. I just got my lashes done. I'm like, <laughs> I was just laughing. Because I'm on the other side like, oh my gosh. I was just crying. And it just hit me so hard how important it is to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is not maybe the negative things that you might have seen with your own eyes, but it's much more the beautiful things that, he's, that God's trying to reveal to us on a daily basis through the Holy Spirit. And you only know that in your heart when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You only understand that. So many people are scared and many people are nervous about meeting the Holy Spirit. And it's almost like this, and, and I'm, I'm gonna end right here. Have you ever met somebody that you're really intimidated by in the very beginning? And you never, you never wanted to talk to them because you're either intimidated or you didn't know what to say. And my funny story is this, is one of my best friends, I had that story. I thought On only spoke Vietnamese. So I never talked to On. On came to church for almost a year. And I, every time I would see him, I would just see him be like, this is my brother-in-law. And I'd be like, oh, hey, how's it going, Pastor? Jen? Okay, then I walk away because I, I, my Vietnamese is bad. I didn't know what to say. And then all of a sudden, one of our previous members that was here, she was like, hey, you know, On and Lynn speak English like fully? I was like, what? 
like fully. They speak English. Like they'll carry a conversation. Like they, I talk to them all the time. I'm like, you don't speak Vietnamese. How do you carry a conversation with them? I'm like they speak English. I was like, Phew. so then I met on and I talked to him, and now he's my best friend. But here's the crazy thing. It's like the Holy Spirit. Many of us are scared to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because we don't know what it's going to be like. But I'll tell you this is if you live your life by being intimidated by by trying new things with your relationship with God, you'll never be able to see the beauty be revealed because God has everything in store for us. It only takes for you to take that leap of faith to say, I want a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because here's the thing in scripture, and I didn't get to get to it, but, oh, I did. Well, you know, you gotta think about it in the disciples' perspective. Jesus dies on the cross. Jesus comes back and reveals himself to them. And they're like, ah, the Messiah's back. And he's like, wait, but I'm leaving. What? We just got you back. But he said, don't worry. There's an advocate. There's somebody that's going to be here on my behalf. It's even better. It's going to be even better. And then we read in, we read in scripture right after this story of Pentecost Sunday, right after the disciples all, they stand before everybody and they're talking and they're having almost like a sermon. They're telling people, hey, and they're like, y'all are crazy. You're drunk. And they're like, it's too early to be drunk. We're not drunk. And they reveal to them these things. And what they reveal to them is just that the Holy Spirit was promised. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. And they shared that day. It's, it, there was conviction in the hearts when they were sharing these things because they were, they were sharing it to these people that were listening. And as they shared, and, and I promise you, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit was on the disciples as they were sharing it. All of a sudden, there was conviction to the point where 3,000 people were added into that, that day. Added. I would say maybe they, if they were believers, maybe they already gave their life to the Lord, but they were filled with the Holy Spirit that day. There was an understanding even more. On that day, I guarantee you, that was the game changer, the ripple effect that changed everything. Why? Because we could see it after this. All the stories of the disciples that pour out, them praying for people. You know, before we were hearing stories about Jesus praying for people. But now we see the stories of the disciples praying for people. People that needed healing. They brought healing to them. The, the crazy stories is, is really after they got filled with the Holy Spirit. But let me ask you this question. What crazy stories do you have after you've been filled with the Holy Spirit? What testimonies are you sharing? I'm not saying crazy as in the scary, spooky stories because his name's the Holy Spirit. No, I'm saying what testimonies do you have that you said, you know what, Pastor Sam, the Holy Spirit led me to do this and I acted upon it and guess what happened? That's the kind of stories I'm talking about. That's the kind of, uh, Pastor Sam, I was nervous. I didn't know what to do. I was, and I was, there was somebody in front of me and they were crippled and I was like, I can't do this. But the Holy Spirit said, yes, you can because you have the power of Jesus in your life. And all of a sudden I laid my hands on them, Pastor Sam, and they were walking. You think that those stories are, are, are far-fetched, like there's no way that that happens. It happens on a regular basis. But maybe you just don't have the relationship with the Holy Spirit to understand these things. But I'm telling you, test and see that the Lord is good. Let's stand to our feet. So where do we go from here? How do we, how do we close the service? As the Holy Spirit is a promise and he is a gift to those who want to receive him. This morning, this is what I ask. Everybody, close your eyes. Nothing spooky is going to happen. <laughs> Nothing scary is going to happen. But you're going to receive a gift. And maybe those of you who have already received this gift of the Holy Spirit, maybe you need to ask for a filling of the Holy Spirit to the point of overflow, to the point where he not only changes your life, but changes the lives around you. So this is what I ask. With all eyes closed, I ask that you open up your hands, and you open up your hands with your palms facing up, like you're receiving a gift. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit, this is what you say. Lord, I receive the Holy Spirit in my life. Say it with everything that you have. Lord, I receive the Holy Spirit in my life. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. With, the, with your hands still open, this is the things that I want you to say is this. Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you to remind me of the things that Jesus has showed us. I need you to remind me that I'm not alone. I need you to remind me that I can be bold. I need you to remind me that I have the heavenly power within me to be able to help change this world. Holy Spirit, I need you to remind me and be with me and fill me up to the point of overflow so that other people's lives around me can change. Holy Spirit, I need you and I receive you. That's how you end it. Holy Spirit, I receive you. I receive you. I receive you. You can put your hands down. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much. And, you know, learning about you today, only brings so much joy into my life and I know into the lives of others in this room because we know what our mission is now, to be able to change this world forever. And Lord, we thank you for the things that you have done and how you planned it out for us to have an advocate in our life. We thank you for the Holy Spirit.
And we ask that you help us to grow a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit every single day. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, go and enjoy and fellowship and have donuts and refreshments. And I'll tell you this, I promise you, if you give the Holy Spirit a try, your life will change forever. We'll be here to pray for those who need prayer. We love you. Can't wait to see you next week.